morning, we uh, took a big jump in Perak Hess. And we went from the beginning of the Perak, or rather, we, uh, yes, went from the beginning of the Perak, went all the way through the Moshal, the analogy of Yosem, uh, through Perak Pasuk Tes Vav. And basically what's happened is, Avimelech, the son of Gidon, who was living in Shechem, he killed his 69 of his 70 brothers who lived back in the homestead of where uh, Gidon was, in the tribal area of Menashe. He did that so that he could be the ruler over the Jewish people. And to which the one escapee from that, which was Yosem, he, um, <clears throat> he came back to Shem, and from the mountain of Hargrizim, he gave out a, an analogy, a marshal, an allegory. He gave an allegory to the trees, who went to the trees to find a king. And they first went to the olive tree, and the olive tree says, I'm not interested, have I not given any more oil that I have to get involved in politics? and taking care of uh, the people. They went to the fig tree, gave the same response. They went to the uh, vine, gave the same response. And then they came, and then the trees, all the trees came to the Atad, the thorn bush, and asked him to reign. And the thorn bush responded to the trees. He says, if you really are anointing me for the because you're not making fun of me, you really mean it, then take shade under my sheltering thorns. And if not, a fire will come from the thorn bush and will eat up all the big trees. So we began uh, going through the Malbim, who was explaining the Marshal. Now, does anybody remember where we ended off in the Malbim? <laughs> I, I think I think we did we did the uh, we did the uh, olive. I think we ended with the olive. We ended with the olive. We explained that there are three different types of leaders you can pick. You can pick a, a spiritual leader. You can pick a economical leader, or you can pick a leader in both that helps them both. I don't know if I have any more of those sheets. I gave out four. I don't know what happened to them. Uh, I made five, really. And there aren't, I don't think there's even, yeah, maybe there is. Somebody, somebody wasn't here yesterday. Okay. So, so the, so the Zayas represented the spiritual leader. Yeah, we talked about that. We talked about Hanukkah. Okay, we're on Pasuk, so we're on page Lamed Dalid, page Lamed Dalid, in the, in the hand that I gave you. Page a little bit more than halfway down the page, where it's Pasuk Yud. Okay, so the Malbim continues. So now, now they're going to the fig. So after Shekata Chachamim Vahatovim, Lamotze Ish Hatov Beinehem. So now that this group of wise men and what we call the good men, right, they couldn't find a good man, a Torah man. They stopped looking for a Torah leader. Now a different group of leadership trees uh, arouses. They're the rich people. They're looking for that which is pleasant for the body to have a pleasant life. So now they're looking for some kind of financial leader. That's the analogy of the fig. Why? The fruits of the fig are very sweet and pleasant to the palate. The Yomrus, they now offer the position to the fig. You go. Even though they know that leadership should really go to the man of spirit, to the religious leader. So you make the efforts to uh, to be the leader. Now, remember, we did point out. If you recall, we, we, the Malbim asked a couple questions, and the first question is. It said by the olive. It said to the olive. 
rule over us. And the question then was asked, but the next two, when the offerings were made, it wasn't rule over, it first said, go, you go and rule over us. What's this you go? So that's what the mob is saying. Really, you're not worthy to be the king. The only one who's worthy to be the king is the olive, because he represents Torah. And they just said, rule. You don't have to do anything else, just rule. You're ready to rule. But you but now when they go to the next level, which is just the financier, sort of saying the truth is, you know, you're not the best leader. Right? So therefore they say, Lechuat. Ratzalarik to say, Hagam Shiyodim Hamisham Lucha Megili Sharuch, even though they know that the leadership should be really the spiritual guy should be the leader. So make the efforts that they have to make in order to become the leader. You have to make yourself into a leader. That's where you have to go. So this will be in true life. That would, that what it means to say they're looking for someone who's rich and who's a warrior. Who can sustain them with all kinds of wonderful treats? Okay, Yudal. So what does the fig respond? Even such a man who has some type of made up perfection, uh, a, a nice perfection for himself. In other words, he thinks he's a, you know, you ask any uh, rich man yeah. and say, you know, are you, a, are you a, 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 a complete person? He says, for sure. Every rich man in his own mind thinks he's, he's accomplished in life. Right? It's, 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 it's imaginary, but he, he thinks so. But even the imaginary successful person, he's not going to want to leave that world of where his success has been to lead the people. And, and, uh, he says, you know, okay, he brings a puzzle, we can skip that. And that's what it says. Hechdalti as miske. If I stop my sweetness, ubezet lo amar sheish bo to el sultim al shim. Here he doesn't say that benefits God and man. By the by the olive, he says, have I stopped my olive, my oil, that benefits, that gives honor to God and man? You see, the rich man here is not saying it's benefiting God and man. It benefits me. Kib emes mechelak arei vein bo tos emes klal. Because the truth, the truth, the truth that comes out just bring a life of pleasantness from physical things isn't purposeful at all in the true world. So the, so the uh, fig is being honest, right? The fig is totally honest uh, about itself and says, if I stop giving myself my own pleasure, that I should waste my pleasure and have all the aggravation. This is mamish what we're going to talk about in the, in the Das Asmacha class tonight. It's mamish what he's going to talk about, where he talks about... Uh, He's, we've been learning for the last uh, while the idea of ritzonos, desires. And the whole um, source of all our unhappiness in, wor in the world, as the tzaddik says, if, you, if a person would take an unhappiness pill, you'd think the person's crazy. You know, I'm, I'm happy. I'm deciding to be unhappy. Give me the pill. You take it over the counter. It doesn't need a special prescription. You take the unhappiness pill. So what is the unhappiness pill? Is wanting things. Wanting things uh, for the sake of wanting them. Wanting physical things is, is will cause you all unhappiness in life because that is what takes you away from understanding the wealth that you really have, which is the soul that you have. The soul that you have is the greatest wealth you could have. And if you'd be focused on that, you'd be the happiest person in the world. Because there's nothing compares to a soul. A soul is perfect. So is so connected to Hashem. But the problem is, instead of spending time thinking about that, we run after physical pleasures. We want so many things. We keep our minds on that. And ultimately, those are things that don't make us happy at all. And therefore, that's the unhappiness pill that is there. So that's, that's what, in this analogy, you're seeing it so beautifully. Even the fig, right, <laughs> who, uh, you know, so, and, and then tonight's analogy is going to be, Get away. What? what? Don't give it away. Well, it's all right. You can hear it twice. These people, uh, these guys yeah, won't we'll hear it at all. Give it away. These guys won't hear it at all. Yeah. 
So you hear it again. And you so it. they said, you know, I says, you think, people think the President of the United States is the happiest man in the world. He says, if anybody's the most miserable man in the world. Islam <coughs> is the most miserable man in the world. Right. So, so, so what is, what is he, what is, what, so what's he doing it for? Because he has to have lots of ritzonos, lots of desires. The only reason you want to be the president is only one reason. It's because you have a, a big, big amount of desire. Because no sane person would want to be the president of the United States. You are the biggest propped up phony alive. It's, it's like Mamis being Avi Melech. You, you, have, you turn yourself into a disgusting person. You know, that's, there's an old rule. Anybody who's a politician, you know, you wouldn't want to be their friend. Because to get to where they got to, they had to be very crooked, very dishonest. And I know, how could you say that? How could you say such lush and horrible, such fine people? And you see, it's all coming out. Even the Halika, holiest of holy, squeaky clean tiger woods, <laughs> Mamish, the great black hope. You know, they lost it with, uh, what's his name, uh, the running back, who was the guy who killed his wife? O.J. 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 was the last great black hoper. Right? And they see what kind of maneuver, what kind of disgusting guy O.J. was. It's, you see what happens. Uh, is he in jail now? Because he, he, he was. He, he, bro he broke in to get his stuff. You see, we, you see what he was, what kind of maneuver he was. And Tiger Woods was going to be with Mama squeaky clean. He's, you know, he's, he's not a, a grub running back who, you know, a football player is pss, pss, grub, you know, not a golfer, you know, it's like his mom said, Ala Milas, right? And you see, he's no different than the rest of them. I'm just saying, but it, it's a whole thing, the whole, you know, this whole, if you want to be the president, it's like screaming out, I am a biggest Baltaiva in the world, the biggest lustful person in the world, and the most important thing I want is power. And, and then the next most important thing, right, is, is legacy, which means covet after you're dead. You know, what's his legacy? It's the new Nusach. What's his legacy? They never spoke about these things. In the 30s and 40s and 50s, they didn't talk about a president's legacy. He had a job to do. Now, legacy means I want to cover while I'm alive, and then when I leave, I'm going to have the presidential library, and I'll make more money and $100,000 every time I speak. It's all what? Ritzonos. What? To live a phony, phony, 100% phony life. That's all it is. And, and they're miserable. They're miserable. It's just like being in jail. With all the power, you have no power at the end of the day. They all get in, they see they can't do anything. We're going to bring peace in the Middle East. And, and he's already sees it. Obama says he doesn't know how he's going to get peace in the Middle East. How, how corrupt can they be? The only way you can get peace in the Middle East is by being corrupt. By, by letting the Arabs kill the Jews. That's how you get peace in the Middle East. And, and, they, and, and any president who says half, half a decent person is, is crazy. And more than that, who wants the Arabs to run the Middle East? The most dangerous thing in the world. Every president is crazy. You think he's going he's to solve all the problems? And I say it's going to be where he's going to... You're going to see, by the time Obama leaves, I don't think he has any gray hair yet, right? Does he? It's not it's all died, it would make a difference. You know, but but they, they'll walk out a different man. You, you see Bush looked a different man. Eight years later, a young, he's a young, good, you know, good strapping fellow, right? And eight years later, it's a broken man, yes. a broken man. And at the end of the day, the Poles hate you. Tell me one president who the Poles didn't hate the guy by the time he was finished. You know, they started with, and then, they, they, more, you know, can you imagine you have a hundred million people who hate you? <laughs> that, so, but you have to have the, so, 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 the, so the, the, the fig tree understands, the fig tree understands, I have a good life, I'm a millionaire. But the clever, you know, who are the clever guys? The guys who don't run for president, you know why? The guys who put him into office are the clever ones, because they get to boss him around. Yeah. They have the real power, but, and they don't have to give up anything of their own. You know? Obama never, he can't, make, he can't make money for the next eight years. He's limited to only a quarter million dollars, officially. Right? But the real rich guys who put him into office, they're going to make sure that he makes laws that they make even more money. Right? So they're the happy guys. They're smart. What, I got, what I got to be like a puppet? I'll, I'll control the puppet. So that, that's what he's saying. Right? Right, so now, number two candidate is out. Okay, you'd base. If I am right, seem like effing. Yes, sir. Is it possible to interpret the fig trees? Point that he's like a mascot in the community, and, he, and, it's, and it, it, if he gives up his time working to create wealth that he would give to the community, to focus on leading the community, that he wouldn't be able to to give to the community. 
No, that, that's not what the Palamabam understands it. Uh, and, and more than that, it doesn't say he gives covet to Hashem and to the people. It, it's just for myself. See, that, that's the big difference. What made me think of that is that he's talking about his fruit, but the fruit is that people eat the fruit. The but he's not talking about other people about benefiting himself. from him. That's the whole point. The olive is speaking how Asher be Yechab Dolakim Vanashim, that through me Hashem will be honored. He just says, Have I stopped giving up? Have I stopped making money? Not, he doesn't add. If we would have added the clause that through me people would benefit. But isn't that what fruit is? No, it's just for myself. It can be. It could be, but he's not doing it. It's just for himself. You, you, you're, you're interpreting more than what is being said, so you don't have license for that. No, no, you're, 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 you want to put your own shot in, but you don't, it has to be supported by the text. See, the Malbum is very particular. Every word of the text has to fit in. So it's a very nice idea, but that the text doesn't support your idea. But, uh, but I think it's emphasizing that even, even the guy who's selfish and narcissistic the most selfish narcissistic guy, but if, if he's really smart in his narcissism, he doesn't want to be a leader. Because being a leader means you're going to be more unhappy being the leader. So he's taken from both extremes. The Torah scholar understands, I'm going to lose my ability to, to enjoy Torah and, and to really help. I'll help more by not being a leader. And even the narcissistic guys on the other extreme, he says, I'll benefit myself more. In other words, he's trying to bring out the idea of who in their right mind wants to be a leader. So even the most selfish guy in the world, if he has half a brain and wants to maintain his selfishness in a, in a, in a healthy way, he won't take leadership. That's what the mom was trying to show. Yeah? Is there any reason they are all from Shiva Minim? Oh, of course. The Shiva Minim. The Shiva Minim. Well, you'll see. Well, when we get to the Atad, you'll see. You'll see in a minute when we get to the Thor and you'll see what's going on. Okay, let's get to the base. By Yomra it seemed like Gephans. Now the trees go to the to the to the uh, vine. Mamutsa Ben Shapes. Now we get to the third group that's in between the first and second. Lipkar Ish Mamutsa Ben Atovarev to pick someone who's balanced between spiritual and physical. Well Moel Hanermas we have that's what we call the the uh, the beneficial one, which is hinted to in the grapes. Why? What do we say about grapes? Shiyayin yisamach levav enosh. Because we have a rule that wine gladdens the heart of the forlorn. V'chamre v'rechani pikhin. And, and, and wine will uh, cause the spiritual people to become more wise. As we'll discuss this more later on. We'll, we'll talk this after we finish the mom we'll get into this you know uh, you know it, there are pros and cons about drinking right obviously if God created grapes and do to make wine it certainly was God's intention that people should drink wine there's no question about it it's not something that one has to stay away from it's not a spooky scary terrible thing it's just like anything else in this world everything in this world is meant uh, to be used in a positive way so uh, wine is no exception Although there are those who 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 who, who fall and succumb and, and have problems because of too much wine, but wine itself is is a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing, and wise people will become smarter from the wine. As we'll give you other examples. Okay, Ratzolai means to say. If you pick a person who's politically wise, but also very good in his midos, in his attributes, in his, in his, in his religious. So we're talking about a religiously uh, political leader. Who, who leads the people with righteous ways, with proper and just laws. So that would be the next step. So okay, you know, you pick somebody like uh, you know, like like a like a, like a Ketzala, you know, uh, with a rabbi from Beit Kel, everybody, right? Who who was on the Knesset, and, and he's there because he really wants to. There's a, a couple of people in the Knesset who really want to help the Jewish people. You know, mo most of them couldn't care less about the Jews. It's all their the, the, the position again. The politicians in Israel aren't any different, if not worse. Same corruption going on over there. 
but a couple, at least there's a couple there. But there's a few, few, few people. So, so like Kessler, who cares about the people for Yesha. So, you know, so let that guy be the leader. Okay, Yid Gimel. But and and but still, it says lechiat. You're going to have to move yourself into that position. You're not totally ingrained. You're not the total tzaddik. But So the the, the now here here you hear, listen closely now. So now the vine says, even though he is the politically wise person and he's also a spiritually good person, he doesn't want to leave the next side now. Next page. He doesn't want to leave that perfection that's found in him, which can make Hashem and other people happy. See, he has a positive. Again, he says, have I stopped my wine that can make Hashem and people happy? So, so he said, yeah, so that's exactly the point. Shutov hamidos, he's good because he has the best of good midos, stock of chesed, rachmim, charity, kindness, mercy. Yismach bom Elokim that makes Hashem happy. V'tov anoga and he has nice conduct. Yismach bom makes people happy. Ech yenua alaisim. So why we want to bother to lead the trees? Okay, so he doesn't want to do it either. So nobody who really is talented wants these jobs. Okay, you dalit. The yom rukola eitzim el ha'tad. Oh, so now. The mom says, so now, now another change. It says all the trees, before it said the trees, because then it was the leaders. Now all the trees come to the thorn bush. And now it's mom is so clear. So at that point, the leaders of the people, the wise men, the rich people, the officers, the, the top people, they stop looking for a king. They can't find a good man. So they're, they're finished. They're resigned to the fact that we're not going to have a leader. So also eitzim no say pre, atcha eitzim no say pre lo yivakshemelach. So until the the trees that are able to give fruits, meaning the leaders, they're not looking for a king anymore. Kilomotz because they can't find him. Rak also now comes now the change comes to call ha eitzim all the trees. What does all the trees include? Ratzolaymar meaning to say ilonei serak the barren trees. Shem rova eitzim which is the majority of the trees. Most trees in the world do not give off fruit. It's a minority give off fruit, right? Right. Go to Larry's place. Lots of trees. I don't think there's one that gives off fruit, right? That was the special ones. Those are the minority. So when it says all the trees, it means the non-fruit bearing ones, meaning the ones who aren't clever in Torah, who aren't clever in making money, who aren't any who don't have any great qualities. It's your common local yokels, okay? Your rednecks. Right? Uh, they're going to look for a king. And these will, they, they have no purpose in their own life. They have no fruits to give. So now they're going to pick the thorn bush. They're going to pick one who also doesn't have any attributes. They're not going to look for anybody with any attributes because I'll make them feel self-conscious. Right? So now, wait a minute, so, so let's say, so what virtue, think for a minute without going ahead, what virtue would a thorn bush have over a, a tall cedar tree? Defend itself, yeah. whatever. So uh, this is like, Mom is so good, this is the wrong one, this, this small one is amazing. He says, What's the advantage that the thorn bush has over all the other barren trees? That you can't get close to it. It's filled with, as it is, as it says, like uh, uh, swords and, sh and shields and thorns that give pain. In other words, you can't get close to the guy unless uh, he's real trouble. Kamosha Kus brings a person without a yoke, a low person. Kikotz Munat Kulam is like, like the thorniest guy from everybody. Vanim, so what is he trying to give the message? Once the successful people, the real successful people, couldn't find a leader, the multitudes came together. It's to find someone who lacks any qualities. And the worst of them all. Umalas, what's his only virtue? 
Rakimole Retzach Veromach Vachonesh is filled with murder, sword, cloak, dagger, etc. That's all he is. He, he, in other words, he has he has power. He has power. Right? But he has no milus. It's mamish. It's mamish. It's as t- true today as it ever was. Um, you know, you, you pick the guy who's, who's mamish a nothing. <laughs> He's mamish a nothing. Right? And that's who you pick, the one. You could learn maybe a little more. You know, it's it's like, it's, it's, it's more than that. It's, um, the other leaders, at least they are inherently leaders. There's two ways to have a leader. The person is inherently has leadership qualities. And the other guy, we create an aura of leadership around him. What make what makes the president such a important guy? You know what it is? Yeah. You, you can't you, the office means that you can't get to the guy. Let's say somebody says somebody who really loves the president. So what does he do? So <coughs> eight o'clock at night, he goes right up to the White House steps. He wants to go in and say Shalom Aleichem to He Wants to give him a, a high five. He's one of my brothers. You know, and I always, always love you. I voted for you, so I want to give you a high five. What's going to happen if that guy's going to go eight o'clock up the White House steps and try to open up the front door? You're going to tell me what kind of friendly Shalom Aleichem he's going to get. He's going to have 25 security guards all over there. They'll, they'll put him away for life. Yeah, now it's like that. <laughs> what? Because people snuck into the party. Yeah, but I'm just saying. Um, but, but what's the whole point? You can't get to him. That's what makes him special. You can't get to him. He's thorny. Can't come close. Ah, can't come close. Must be a special guy. A cedar tree, you can go right up to a cedar tree and give it a hug. Ah, if people can come close to you, you must not be important. Right? That's, that's the whole thing. Important person you can't get a hold of. She set up layers of defense <laughs> mechanisms. All kinds of thorny secretaries and security guards and things like that. So you can't get to him. Right? My mom was not saying that. My mom was saying it's, it's, it's power, physical might, that you could hurt others, which is also a value. So, okay. So now, so that was, that's what they look for next. So it's interesting. In the United States, there was a period where they would only look for generals to be the presidents. You know, yeah, Grant. Uh, you had a number of them. Until Eisenhower. Eisenhower. Okay. Oh. Why would that make the guy worthy to be a president? Does he know anything about running a country? He just knows nothing about how to kill people. He's excellent at formulating plans to kill people. So that makes him worthy to be a... Well, it's a popular choice. It was a popular choice. You don't, you don't make people because they have any intelligence to be the president. Right? Like I said, the rich people are running the country. Those are the ones who make sure that the laws are passed. So, so that's what's happening. Yeah. So, uh, so it's a cloud goal. You look at anybody who's a, who's a politician, by and large, by and large, I mean, there may be a rare exception, they're totally worthless people. That's what it is. The per- person who really wants to help people won't waste his time. You know, you have to go to this function, you have to visit this ambassador, and this ambassador, and this, and go to this dinner, and that dinner. What are you you're wasting your whole time? <laughs> you want to do something? Do something. Roll up your sleeves and do something to make the world a better place. Don't just, you know, be a, a figurehead. That's really what it boils down to. So test vault. So let's see what the thorn bush answers. He accepts the offer for the kingship and he's looking for it. Because you know what? He has nothing to lose by being the leader. He's worthless before he becomes. He's just as worthless afterwards. The other ones were losing by becoming a leader. Therefore, they rejected it. The guy says, I can't learn Torah so much anymore. The guy says, I can't make my own money anymore. The other guy says, I can't be a, 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 a proper balanced person anymore. I have what to offer. The Torah says, nothing to offer, nothing to offer, nothing to lose. That's, that's your man. Right? Rak basher yishamets levavo im libam nachanim. Only that he he can. I don't know exactly what that means. Like make chametz his heart, whatever. With with others who like him. So then you know, okay. If, in other words, if 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 it's like-minded people, then fine. Okay, maximum. So he makes a condition. And listen to this condition. He says, im beemes ubetamim atem mashkimosi. If in all sincerity you really want me, you're not playing games. You're not fooling me. You really want me to be your leader? So then, bo chasu So now take shelter 
under my shade. Hmm? How's a sequoia tree going to take shelter under the shade of a thorn bush? The Adun is well known. No. The thorn bush has no shade at all. And more than that, it's the lowest of all the trees. So what does he mean? Rex Lomer meant to say, you guys who want to coronate me are all better than me. You have to leave your pedestal. You high cedar sequoia trees. And, 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 and the prince and, and the ones that are, are big. So you're going to have to lower yourself to sit under me in the lowest of all places. And my thorns, that give pain, that will give you the protection. In other words, you're going to have, the only way a tree, a big tree can have protection, is got to lower itself. Go lower than me and my thorns, which is really what? My military might. That's what will protect you, but that's it. But you're going to have to humble yourself before me. Yeah, well, the pre yes, yes, Mr. President. Yes, Mr. President. Whatever you say, Mr. President. We all rise for Mr. President. All these big people, the big businessmen, you want to make him president? You're going to have to give him COVID. You can't dare publicly say anything against the president. He's, he's your friend. You want him to help you out? Be quiet. Right? But, the email, but you might have thought, if you're just pulling my leg and you're making fun of me, you're making a joke, you're making me as a president, as, as a, as a as, in other words, and so what do you think is going through Obama's mind? What is he really thinking? So it's interesting. Does he think he has more power than the rich people who put him into office? Or not? Be yeah. mind, but, if, but maybe you're just making a joke. Maybe all you did, all, all, you, all you rich, um, rich Democrats, right? Is you know, is all you, you rich people want to get into office to protect your own, your own desires, and just make the middle class pay more and more and more. Right. So, if, but if, if you were just making fun of me, huh, so vim ayin kisim rodu, you're going to rebel against me. Don't think I can't hurt you due to my low status. Well, okay, and that's not so. Because what do we know about the thorn bush? Since the thorn bush is ideal for starting fires, so my thorn bush will start a fire that will destroy the biggest of all trees. The president can destroy the world. He can destroy the world by stupid mistakes. Stupid mistakes can destroy the world. So you put in a thorn bush, you see what you're going to get. You see what you're going to get. Mamish, it's like such a good political commentary. You just translate this and send it to the New York Times. The, st the story of the thorn bush. You know, it's a mamish. It's unbelievable. So anyway, so that's that's that thing. Now that is now it's very interesting as we go through this whole story. There is so little midrash on this whole story. This is the whole story is coming up. Very little midrash, as if it's quite an embarrassing event for the Jewish people. You'll see everyone's idolaters, murderers. It's like such a shift in in the, in the whole book now. The rabbi said, "There's not much you can learn from this. You can, it's, you can see it pretty. We, we gave a couple of midrashim in the beginning, and that's it. There's nothing more to learn from Rishayim over there. So, uh, so now let's now let's go and give a different shot now, not a contradictory shot. Now we're going to explain outside Rashi's interpretation and to other Chazal of what these three, what these three um, uh, fruits were. So we'll start with the Zayis." The Zayas, so Rashi says, the Zayas is an, analog, is an allegory to Osniel ben Kenaz, the first Shofet. And what do you remember about Osniel ben Kenaz? A little review now. What was his special, what was the big claim to fame for Osniel ben Kenaz was what? What did he do? He brought back all the laws that were forgotten after the death of Moshe Rabbeinu. He represented Torah, 100% Torah. He brought back the halachas. That is the olive oil. Right? That's clearly the olive oil. And that's, that's what it's saying. The people, now it's interesting, although it, it doesn't say it overtly, but, but, what he is, but what he is telling them is, you know, don't you think Jews had thought to make, don't you think they were thinking about making us kneel the leader too? You think it was only by Gidon? 
You see what Asnil ben Kenaz did? He was able to capture, a, 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 he fought the wars of Torah. So let him be the king as well. And, and, and more than that, what tribe is Asnil from? From Yehuda. He's the younger brother of Kalev. Right? He's from Yehuda. He has all the qualities. He's from, he's from Yehuda. He has Torahs and that. Do you think they wanted him to be the king? No. He didn't want it. He, what did he want? I want to run my yeshiva. I'm yeshiva. I want to learn Torah. That's how I'll be most productive. Then they go to the to and go to the fig. Who's that analogy to? Keep up the thoughts. Devorah. Devorah. Interesting. We skip Ehud. Ehud, you know, he's an okay guy, but, you know, it doesn't compare to these guys. So, Devorah. Now, why is that Devorah? Well, it would be better to be a Tamar, yeah. Or, or it be it's interesting, it's very interesting. Or it would be better for be a, uh, what's the other one? A, uh, a no, a day, uh, oh yeah, a day. What, bees make honey from? No, 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 but what's the other honey come from? The one the bees don't make from? Date, date honey? Or it's one of the, yeah, date, date honey, yeah, okay. Yeah, so that, that doesn't fit a little bit over here. So, but still, it, it's, it's the fig. So why is what's shot the fig? So there's a midrash that says there's, there's many opinions. What was the forbidden fruit that Adam and Eve could not eat? There's many opinions of what it was. One opinion was was a fig. It's a fig tree. And what's one of the proofs to that? Because after they sinned and they felt uncovered, what did God do? He gave them garments, and what was it from? Fig leaf. Fig leaf. Obviously, it had to be from the thing they sinned, and that's what Hashem helped them with. So therefore, so and, and since to a certain degree, it was a woman who caused man to eat from the forbidden fruit. So therefore, that fruit, you know, is, is corresponding to Devorah, who made a tikkun on it. She made the tikkun. She made the correction. You understand? Because now she took her husband, who was who was nothing great, and made him into a big person. So that was the tikkun of the sin of eating from the forbidden fruit, which was the fig. So that's why we can now to a fig. And, and, uh, and as well, there's also a medrash in Shir Ashirim that the Jewish people are compared to the fig trees. Why? So the rabbis say, let us give thanks to those that have sinned. What? Let us give thanks to those who have sinned? Yes, had first man not sinned, there really wouldn't have been the Jewish people as they are today. Had there been no sin, there would have been no Jewish people. There would have been Adam. And Adam would have finished the tikkun. So, so the sin made the Jewish people the first fruits by the sin of Adam Arishon, who ate from that fruit. So therefore, um, uh, you know, so the Jews come into being through that fact. And, and the Targum says in one place, and Shir Hashirim, he says, yes, and since we're the, 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 the Jews are compared to the figs, and therefore they sing Shira, they sang Shira at the Yamsuf. Because they were these kinds of people who could appreciate what was going on, they had in them the ability to sing Shira. Which means to say, what was the whole point of the shira? Was to make a tikkun again to the sin of first man. Really recognizing Hashem, right? So they're particularly sensitive to praise Hashem because the Jews understand that they came from a, from a place that started bad. So that's why at every miracle the Jewish people sing and say praises. Which, why? Because we focus on our yearning to bring out Hashem. Because we understand we only came into the world because man stumbled and took away Hashem from the world. And our whole point now of being around is to bring Hashem back into the world. And obviously, very nicely, Devorah sang Shira too. So that's how she becomes the fig. And finally, the Gef and the Vine, that represents who? Gidon. Gidon is in, in, the, in between. And interesting, the Gematria of Gidon, Gimel, Dalad, Ayin, Vav, Nun, Sophis, check it out, is 133. The Gematria of Gef and Vine is 133. Same Gematria. And now Gidon was a descendant of Yosef. And Yosef clearly is the patriarch who's associated with wine. Throughout the entire story, last week, the dream of the butler who squeezed the grapes and the wine. He interpreted the dream. He put a, a wine goblet in Benjamin's sack, right? When he met the brothers, they didn't yet know who he was. So the second time where they got together, and what happened, we know that both the brothers, all the brothers made a vow after they sold Yosef not to drink wine because they saw how fa their father was so saddened. So they hadn't drunk wine for 22 years till they met Yosef the second time. They still didn't know it was Yosef. 
but but they were nervous because he was first asking terrible to them, then he was nicer to them, and they said, hey, sit, eat by me, and that's the first time it mentions tw after 20 years, they have a mishta of a, of a party, of drinking, and that was the first time where drinking was related in a positive sense in the Torah is in this week's Parsha. Where after 20 years they hadn't drunk, so now they finally drank and they kind of felt better. There's a certain kinship. Even though it, it, they thought it was the vice guy, but you know, he reminds of a nice guy. You know, it was like, it was kind of Yosef, but they didn't get chap, it was Yosef. Right? Also, when Yosef asks for his father to come in next week's Parsha, he brings gifts and wants one of the gifts, old wine. Because it says old wine makes the wise, the older people wiser. And of course, Yosef, every tribe compares to a month of the year. Yosef compares to Ador, the month of Ador. And why? And why? And why? Because this is the end, number one. Number two, he has two sons. That's why there's two Adors. Right? And what do we do in Ador? We drink wine. And the biggest proof of all is what I said on Shabbos. What meter does Yosef have? Sowed. So does the Mita. And what do you know? Gemara says, Nichnas Yain, when the wine goes in, takes a sod. The sod comes out. The simple meaning is, when you drink wine, what's inside comes out. But the truth is, that's not necessarily a negative thing. Because Gemara says, you can judge a person with three things. Bikiso, Bikaso, Bikoso. You can tell a person by what he drinks. And a tzaddik understands how to drink. The tzaddik knows how to drink. You drink a little bit. And then all the secrets come out. What kind of secrets? Not Tiger Woods' secrets. The secrets of Torah. The deep, the deeper part of the person. The deepest part of the person. The, the most delicious part of the person comes out. And that, and that is only when a Jew knows how to drink properly. So now, but that's what we say. Jews know how to drink properly. And that, and, okay, so now, those don't want. So you see, all these leaders didn't want. All of a sudden, where are you coming from, Avimelech? You're coming. Do you want this? It's going to only be problems that we'll see tomorrow, Mr. Shem.